All right, so after we went through um, the basic life cycle uh, for bacteria, yeah, sorry, for a virus, uh, and some of the aspects of lytic versus lysogenic and so on, what we want to do now is look uh, sort of at the, the end of the material that we had covered in class uh, that had to do with what I referred to as the, the Baltimore system for classification. Uh, and what we really have here is a way of, of breaking up um, a virus into its by its genetic material. Okay, so the, the viral genome is going to be either double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, single-stranded RNA plus, which we call sense, single-stranded RNA minus, which we call antisense, and then retroviral RNA, which is essentially single-stranded RNA plus um, with, with a difference. Okay. And then there's another group of double-stranded uh, DNA um, virus as well that, that do things a little bit different. Um, what do you need to know then? So first is, you know, do you have a list of those? Be able to identify, you know, what what is RNA? If you don't know what that is, make sure you go back uh, and review it. Um, so what I want you to know is from the viral genome, it's going to infect the host cell. So it infects the host. And once it infects the host, two things right, are going to happen. We're going to get uh, genome replication. Uh, not right. genome replication, and we're going to get gene expression. Now the thing is, we're going to have a variety of different starting points, right? So one of our starting points could be, for example, uh, double-stranded DNA. So with double-stranded DNA, Genome replication is just straightforward. Uh, double-stranded DNA to double-stranded DNA. Semi-conservative replication. You know, two new strands, just the same way you've studied it with bacteria and eukaryotic cells in general. It's just the same, same sort of process. Uh, the genome is just replicated. As far as gene expression goes, for the double-stranded DNA, we have double-stranded DNA from the virus, this is the viral genome. We then get RNA through transcription, and then we get our proteins through translation. So very straightforward. It's exactly kind of what you would have studied before. Um, nothing particularly odd going on there. Now, we have some variations, right? We have the single-stranded DNA virus. Uh, what the single-stranded DNA virus can do is this. Uh, often this DNA will be circular, like this. And so what can happen is, following the basic sorts of uh, patterns, uh, DNA polymerase can come in here, and then it can make another strand of DNA. So the original single-stranded DNA, color-wise, you can see here, uh, that came with the virus. And now this is a new strand that's being made that's going to be a template. And now what's going to happen is, using the rolling circle model of replication, we can have this moving, DNA polymerase working along it, and now it's making new single-stranded DNA. All right, so this is copies of the genome, which will ultimately be packaged, you know, because it'll be cut 
right? And then this will be a, a new copy of the genome. And then this will be a new copy of the genome. This will be a new copy of the genome. So this model will just keep working and working and working and working and working from the template. So the main thing you need to know is if you have single-stranded DNA to replicate the genome, the first thing you have to do is create a template. Once you create the template, then through rolling circle, you can just continuously, so nonstop, be making a single strand of DNA, like the, just the leading strand, like there's no lagging strand. Just boom, just keep working, and then those little copies can be packaged up into the, the genomes. And that's it. For gene expression, you know, you're gonna have the, the host genome. So this is the single-stranded DNA from it. You would essentially just copy a piece of uh, RNA, and then that RNA could be used for translation to make the proteins. Okay, so straightforward mechanism. Okay, so for the the DNA types, this is what you're we're going to have. Okay. Now for the RNA types, uh, you can see we have a few variations here. All right. this quickly. Now some of these are going to be fairly simple um, when it comes to certain aspects of it, like uh, the gene expression part of it. And some of them are going to be a little bit tricky, but the main thing is you just need to know um, what you need to end up with and what's your starting point. And what you need to end up with essentially for replication for genome is just more of whatever the genome is, so more double-stranded RNA or more single-stranded DNA, whatever it happens to be. And for gene expression, for all of them, the end result's a protein. How do you get to a protein? You need RNA. The RNA may just be the messenger RNA, like it's gonna be in this case, or it's gonna to have to come from DNA like in the, the other cases, right? But so just use, there's nothing um, that breaks any of the rules that you had previously learned, right? It's, it's all still following those rules, you just have different starting points with it. So in this case, let's look at uh, double-stranded RNA, we're overall going to get um, something similar uh, happening uh, that we just had with, uh, with, with the DNA replication, okay? Where um, ultimately um, we're going to get a template, you know, made of a strand and then we can get the new, new strand manufactured along it to make more double-stranded RNA, but now this is RNA, not DNA. For gene expression, what we'll have happen is simply one of these strands is going to be the coding strand, and one will be a template strand. So just along that particular template strand, transcription will occur. And we'll make our messenger RNA, and that messenger RNA will be used to make our, our proteins. Right? So again, it's nothing particularly different you know, going on there. The single-stranded RNA plus is just a single strand of RNA. So now for genome replication, what's going to happen here is we'll get a template strand, but that will then separate like this. So this is our template. And now from that template, we'll be able to make more and more copies of the genome. So that's the genome. Okay, and so now these are copies of the genome that are being made from a template. Now, single-stranded RNA plus when we come over here, essentially is messenger RNA. So for this one, we don't have to have this transcription step, really. We can actually just go directly from reading this, um, the genome itself, and making proteins. So it's just sort of direct uh, translation. So just straight away, just have it work like that. For single-stranded RNA minus, it's really going to work pretty much the same. This part here, 
is going to be the same. I'll just put a different color. Uh, this is what's going to be different over here. So for single-stranded RNA minus, it's just single strand, same concept. You need a template. And from that template, you'll then make more copies of the genome. And then it'll just keep happening over and over again. From that template, you can make many copies of the genome, which will all be RNA minus. Now, here, this is single stranded RNA, but it's not messenger RNA in terms of it's not readable. It's not the, the code. It's the, um, it is like the, the template, not the, the coding. It does, it's not the information that we need to actually translate. We have to actually go the other way first to make the readable messenger RNA. So we actually have to have this, this process, the same sort of process happen over here. But in, in this case now, this is a messenger RNA. And so these two would essentially be the same. Uh, sorry, this would essentially be the same. This one here would be like, just like the messenger RNA, but it's not used for that. In this case, it's just used as a template to make more copies of the genome. Here, it's actually used as messenger RNA, so we can then make, make proteins from it. All right, so double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, RNA plus, RNA minus, single-stranded, and now we go into the, the very last last one here uh, that we're going to look at um, as a review, which is the retroviral um, RNA. So in this particular case, we're going to have um, single-stranded RNA again. Uh, and technically, it's it's like a single-stranded RNA plus in terms of the type of strand it is, but it's it's not usable directly as messenger RNA. So th that's one of the differences. They're both single-stranded RNA pluses, essentially the one that's actually single-stranded RNA plus, and the retroviral. So it is a single strand of RNA, but um, it, it can't directly act. So we can't directly get the gene expression from this. What has to happen is this. With this piece of single-stranded RNA, we're also going to get reverse transcriptase. So the reverse transcriptase enzyme enters the host cell along with the genome. It's not in the host cell. So all the other enzymes involved in all these other processes were necessary um, to infect the cell because the virus doesn't have those enzymes itself. But this enzyme comes along with a retrovirus. What it can do is then allow the reverse of transcription. So we can actually go from, uh, well, here would be RNA, to a single strand of DNA. So DNA from RNA, that's the reverse. That single strand of DNA will then get removed and then become a template for yet another strand of DNA to be made. And now we'll end up with double-stranded DNA. Here, this retroviral DNA now is going to come over here and become integrated into the host cell. So the lysogenic type cycle. So we get this is a viral double-stranded DNA, yet what we're talking about here is a virus with a viral genome is single-stranded RNA. So before this happens, we have to go from RNA to DNA and then into the integration with the host. Now, in order to make copies 
of the uh, genome. Simply kind of can do transcription from DNA into RNA, and that would be the viral genome. And as far as gene, so that's the viral, viral replication part over here. As far as gene expression goes, it would just be pretty much going from DNA to RNA to protein, just the way it would in, in a normal a normal cell, right? There's nothing that has, special has to happen. The unique thing that has to happen here is this part here, to go from the RNA to the DNA to integrate into the chromosome, and then you can make copies of RNA, which would actually be the genome from it, and then you can express the genes to make the viral capsid proteins and start to package them up again and go through that whole process. So um, review it more. Again, this is, ju this is just a quick overview uh, of the things that we talked about in class, just as a review for your exam. Um, just make sure you can outline them and ask, answer some questions if, you're, if you are asked, you know, what, um, how does the genome of this type of virus replicated and how are its genes expressed? Or for this one, you know, how are its genes expressed? Or how is it replicated? You might be asked both, you might be asked just one aspect of it. Just make sure you can answer those. Again, 